Welcome to Vacuum Wars, and to a long overdue video where I will try to find out what the best robot vacuum mop combo is. Over the years, we've reviewed about 25 or 30 robot vacuums which also had mopping attachments, and each time we put them through a very similar series of tests. Usually a few dried on stain tests and some wet tests, but those tests weren't really accurate enough to tell which robot was better than another. They all seemed pretty much the same to me. But recently, with the the release of a new generation of super robot vacuum mops with self-mop cleaning and self-mop tank filling auto empty bin systems, I thought it was time to develop some new, more accurate tests for robot vacuum mops. In the process, I learned a lot of things that I didn't know before and found that there really are some big differences between these robot vacuum mops. There is a lot of technical information in this video, so feel free to use the timestamps below to skip around, links in the description, and let's get started. First, the basics. What I mean by a robot vacuum mop combo is a regular robot vacuum that vacuums hard floors and carpets like normal, but also comes with an optional mop attachment, usually a plastic plate that you can attach to the robot when you want it to mop at the same time it vacuums. The more expensive ones have what I call electric water tanks, which means they have a small pump in the tank that pumps water through small holes in the plate to saturate the mopping pads. The electric tanks usually have an option in the app to choose how much water you want to use, like a low, medium, and high setting. Some of the cheaper ones use non-electric or gravity-fed tanks, which let a set amount of water through the holes at a constant rate. Some of them have moving pads, like the Roborock S7 Max V, which vibrates back and forth while mopping, with the idea being to loosen stuck-on stains. Some, like the Echovax X1 Omni and the Bissell Spinwave, use two round spinning pads instead of one single flat pad. I will pick some of my favorite at the end of this video, but I mostly wanted to see if any type of system was better than another, since many of them share various characteristics. The first thing I did was use the infrared camera to see how quickly and thoroughly they saturated their pads with water. I ran them on their maximum water flow setting and timed how long it took for them to fully saturate the floors, which is admittedly a little subjective. My favorite of the new tests was the dried on stain test, which included nine total stains using three liquids coffee, grape juice, and V8 juice, which I've found in the past to have increasing levels of difficulty to remove when dried. I also varied the droplet size of the three stains into three different levels. I ran each robot for four passes, and by pass I mean one row by row run as well as a perimeter run, which they all more or less do. I ran the infrared test just before the dried on test to give it a more real world saturation. I assigned values for each stain based on their difficulty and and droplet size and gave each robot points for each stain they cleared multiplied by a factor depending on which of the four passes that particular stain was cleared. So for example the first pass was times four, the second pass times three, and the third pass times two. The highest possible score would be 108 where the actual scores ranged from between 67 and 94. Another test was the glow-in-the-dark wet test. Unlike the dry test, this was done by pre-moistening each pad by hand. In addition to showing the general mopping ability, I hoped that it would determine how quickly each robot would overload and begin creating streaks. I also took into account their water tank size, which I physically measured where applicable. With the infrared shots, I found that there was a significant range in the time it took to get the pad saturated, from about two minutes with the DreamBot Z10, Bissell Spinwave, and Echo X1 Omni, all the way to 11 minutes with the Roborock E4, which wasn't too surprising since the E4 was a gravity-fed or non-electric tank. The Bissell Spinwave was the fastest overall at dispensing water. The Roborock S7 Max V was notably slow for an electric tank, as it only had one hole for dispensing water in the center of the mopping pad. I learned that most of these robots are pretty stingy with their water distribution, even on their highest settings. This is presumably because they have small water tanks and they sometimes need to cover large areas. But more water was better for dried on stains and those that dispensed a lot of water like the Ufi L70 and the Bissell Spinwave did really good on this next test. For example, in the dried on stain tests, the overall winner was the Bissell Spinwave followed by the Ufi L70. And while that much water is apparently great for dried on stains, those were also the two robots that failed in the next test, the glow in the dark test, because it it was revealed that using that much water caused them to overload the pads too quickly and streak dirty water on the floors much quicker than their competitors. 
if you eliminate the Bissell and the Eufy because of this, then the two most expensive robots, the Echovax Omni X1 and the Roborock S7 Max V, tied for the best at this test. And that's kind of a big deal to me because it means I was totally wrong about the D-Bot X1 Omni in my original review, where after testing it in at least five different ways, I could not get the mop to work well at all. I've since taken down that review because clearly the Echovax X1 Omni is a top-notch mopping robot, and I need to go back over the whole review again to find out what I did wrong. The only thing I can figure is that something changed in a software update, or perhaps there was an error in the automatic filling of the Omni's water tank. It was the only robot where you can't access its water tank physically and have no way of checking the level of water. All right, apologies over, moving on to the glow-in-the-dark tests. Here, the Roborock S7 Max V and the iLife tied for first place, followed by the Roborock S5 Max. I think that the iLife, with its extra large pad, was able to soak up more per pad than the others. As I mentioned, the two worst at this were ironically the ones that did the best at the dried on tests. Again, because if you use too much water, it will cause streaks when overloaded. I think the tank capacity is a pretty good proxy for how much square footage they can cover per run. And here the Bissell Spin Wave had the largest tank, followed by the Roborock S5 Max. The most notable one was the X1 Omni, which again was the only one I couldn't physically access to test because it's internal, so I had to rely on official specs, and it apparently holds way less than the others did at only 80 milliliters. The Roborock S7 Max V got some extra points for being the only one that raises its mopping pad when it senses carpets, though it should be noted that officially this only works with carpets four millimeters or less high, so pretty low pile carpets. I also gave the S7 Max V and the X1 Omni extra points for having their amazing auto docks, which automatically empty the dustbin, clean the mopping pads, and refill the mop tanks. There is a lot more to choosing which is the best robot robot vacuum mop combo, like their general performance on hard floors and carpets, their navigation ability, app features, as well as new fancy features like AI obstacle avoidance, and I tried to take that all into account for my top picks. So with all these things considered, my top three picks are number one, the Roborock S7 Max V, number two, the D-Bot X1 Omni, and number three, the Roborock S5 Max, which is a much cheaper option than the other two. I plan on doing a deep dive into the S7 Max V version versus the Omni in an upcoming video, so links in the description, and be sure to subscribe to Vacuum Wars before you leave. Thanks for watching.